On this episode, I'm gonna be showing you how to fix damaged electrical box or J box like this. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. My electrical codes and your electrical codes might be different. So always make sure that you're always current and up to date with your current electrical codes and you have the proper permits. Turn off the power from your circuit breaker and if you're unsure and unconfident with working with any type of electrical, please hire a certified and qualified professional. So you have one of these electrical outlets on the outside, it looks like it's fine, but when you start plugging things in and then you're done using it, you try pulling it out and it starts to wiggle like this. So let's go and open up this cover plate. Before you even start digging in and touching this outlet right here, turn off the power from your circuit breaker. Use a voltage tester like this. So voltage testers are only good if you test it out on the live wire first to make sure that this is working. Well, you obviously know that this thing is starting to move left or right. It is flopping like this. So let's take off this outlet and see what's going on on the J box. Just hanging on the thread and it just breaks off like that. You're probably gonna say this J box is useless. Now I'm gonna have to replace or take it off. But before you do that, let's explore some of your options. Let's go with option number one, which is the easiest out of all the options I'm gonna be giving you. Now the product that you can use is this box doctor. Just pretty much clips, which are very easy to use. So all you need is one. There are 10 that comes in the package. Link on the description down below so you can check out this product. Make sure that the name box doctor is at the top. And then this one is what's gonna be on the inside of the box. Notice how there's three channels. You can choose from any one of these. So if you miss one and it doesn't fit directly in the middle, there are two sides as well that you can offset so that screw will penetrate right through there. Slide this on in between there and clip it right between the box, between the box and the drywall. Like so, screw this in. So now with your plug, insert that, take it out, there you go, nice and secure. Once again, this product is called the Box Doctor. If you're interested on this clips, I'll leave it in the description down below. Now it's fairly easy to take off as well. Just take your flathead screwdriver and it just pops out just like that. And you can reuse this anywhere in case you don't wanna use this box anymore. So the other product that I'm gonna show you is pretty much quite similar to the Box Doctor. It's called G-Clip. Now, if you look at this one, the same concept, but instead of having three optional holes offset, this one only has one. It will work exactly just like the Box Doctor. So find the center of the box, and then just push that in like so. Pull it out. Nice and secured. So again, if you're interested on this product, I'll leave the link on the description down below. So what if you tried everything and those options that I gave you just doesn't fit your needs? Well, the only option that we can go through is pretty much replacing the box itself. But this J box is pretty much nailed to a stud somewhere. Now the stud that this is gonna be located, so it's gonna be either on the left or the right. Your job now is to figure out where that stud is. Now, sometimes if you have a gap like this, you can see the stud right through the crack. But if you don't see that and it's nicely tight and fitted onto the drywall, which is actually a great thing, whoever installed that, you're gonna have to use a stud finder. Now, this is a Franklin stud finder. And if you go like this, you will see that the stud is on the right side, nothing on the left side. So we already know, given this is the mock-up, this is the edge, so that's where the stud is. But make sure you use your stud finder to find that. You're gonna use a handheld hacksaw or a, if you have a uh, oscillating tool or any type of mini reciprocating saw, you can use that as well. Use one of these. You can wedge this between the crack now and once you go through here, you're gonna feel a little metal nail. Now this thing is pretty much secured by two nails, one at the top, bottom, and then you're just gonna hack that nail out. 
top and bottom. What a lot of people use is this old work. Now this one is the single gang old work J box. These little clips right here, very easy to use. All you have to do is insert this through the box like so. Screw this in. This old work J box is only good for in my opinion for switches because if you're using this with electrical outlets, this thing is not that strong in my honest opinion and the longer that the more time you use this especially if it's in a high traffic area where you're going to be using this to plug in and out a lot of this will tend to get loose over time and it will not stay in place so i highly suggest that you use this this type of j box on switches where you don't need to pull in and out any plugs now the one that i highly suggest that you use is this adjustable type old work J box. Now it's pretty much the same as the other one, but instead of it having those two clips at the bottom, this one just straight screws onto the stud itself. And I believe in my opinion, it's a lot stronger, it makes contact directly to the stud. And all you have to do is screw this in. And you, again, that's why it's called adjustable. You can adjust it any way that you want, like so. Now once you have that in position, all you gotta do now is just screw those two screws in right straight to the stud. And if you can reuse the piece that just broke off, it's by applying super glue. Now there are many types of super glue in the market. One type that we can use is this Loctite super glue. So the other products that I actually recommend, which will have a higher strength bond, will be using Bondo. Now this is the all purpose putty. So another product that you can use is the JB Weld plastic bonder as well. All you gotta do is apply it on the outside, stick it in there and you should be ready to go. So what if the screw inside your J box is just way too big now cause it's just been so overused and you're trying to put in the screw right here and it's just loose and just wiggling inside there and it's not making any thread. My other option for you is to use a bigger type screw. Now you can either use one of these general purpose screws, the wood screw, this is about two inch, two inch and a half. I mean, you don't necessarily have to use this length, probably a two incher or one, uh, one and a half inch wood, uh, general purpose screw like this one, wood screw will pretty much work as well. Or you can go by using one of these drywall screws as well. And it works really, really well and it will hold it in place. Now this will work with the drywall screw as well. So this drywall screw is about an inch and a half. And works perfectly fine. So friends, that's pretty much all the options, tips and tricks that I have when it comes to fixing broken J boxes. Let me know in the comment section down below which method or which option that you like the most and you were willing to try out. Again, make sure that if you're interested on any of the products that I use, including those G clips and those uh, box doctors and all the tools that I use in this video, I'll leave it all in the description. 